An important property of waves that distinguishes them from particles is diffraction. Diffraction is basically a property in which waves interfere with themselves. What we're going to go over in this lecture is first the idea of Huygens' principle to understand this kind of interference uh, known as diffraction, and then use that to explain and to fully characterize how diffraction works. So the idea of diffraction is that when a wavefront encounters a barrier that has a hole in it, it will bend at the edges. Here's the simulation of some waves. So we have straight waves being generated at the top. If they reach a barrier, most of them reflect off, but there's a hole in the barrier, a single slit, which some of the waves can pass through. You see the wave is interfering with itself as it goes out. Um, most of the energy is in a narrow triangle that comes out, but then there is a node on either side where there is no wave action. A little bit to the side of that, there's a secondary maximum, which is very small. On the side of that is another node, yet another node, very weak. And beyond that, you see wave action. And possibly another node out here um, where there's very little wave action. If we make the waves larger, so I'm going to decrease the source frequency to make the wavelength more. You'll see that the uh, waves are going to diffract more, and you won't get any node on the side. So you see that the slit is essentially acting like a uh, point source of the wave, and the wave that's coming out is essentially circular waves just emanating from the slit as if it was just a point source. If I make the frequency even lower, the wavelength even longer, it's even more so. There's even less concentrated energy in the front, and pretty much it's radiating symmetrically out from the slit. Here's how we can explain this and what I'm talking about. Huygens' principle. Huygens' principle is that a wave front, any point on a wave front, can be considered a source of the wave. Um, that the wave front consists of every point being a source, and all the sources are acting coherently, that they're emitting the wave at the same time in the same phase. So we can think of this here. I've just broken down a small wave front into five uh, sources. And we can think of how the wavelets come out from that source, and over time they build up, and they will interfere with each other. And so as the crest meets the crest, trough meets the trough, you'll get constructive interference. But as a trough meets a crest, like we have going on in the middle here, you'll get destructive interference. Over time, these waves uh, add up in this fashion, that you'll get crests in a line and troughs in, the, in a line as well. And what you'll actually see, instead of all the individual wavelets, is their sum. To get most of the energy of this wave front is going to go forward, and it's not going to go. St it's going to go forward, but it's not going to uh, be a single column. It's going to come out in somewhat of a triangle, and there will be some wave energy out on the edges. And that wave energy out on the edges is what we generally refer to as diffraction. But I'm going to try to characterize the entire process. So these wavelets interfere with each other, and they combine, and that produces the observed wavefront that we see. So if we have a barrier and waves form behind the barrier, as they go through a slit in the barrier, the waves that pass around the barrier or through the barrier are a little bit different than the waves that approach the barrier. And the reason for that is because we've got the, just the wave that's coming through interfering with itself, or the wavelets interfering with each other. So the idea is that there is a barrier with a slit in it that will permit waves to pass. The slit has a dimension d, a width d. The waves approach the barrier. The waves have a wavelength, lambda. And as they approach the barrier, the barrier stops all the waves that uh, come to the barrier, but the slit permits them to pass. 
all the points in the wave front at the slit can be thought of as coherent wavelet sources. And as the wavelets from those coherent sources uh, emanate from this slit, they will interfere with each other. They'll interfere constructively and destructively. Far enough away from the slit By far enough away, I mean that uh, we can think of uh, wavelets emanating from one side of the slit and the other side of the slit coming at approximately the same direction, um, which we will call theta, a direction from the normal to the barrier. So if this is the normal, then the angle theta is the direction that, the, uh, that we're looking at, uh, deviation from the normal. And at some theta, we will have wavelets constructively, and at some theta, we'll have the wavelets destructively interfering. What I'd like to derive is the angle theta for destructive interference of the waves. Now, how's that going to work? I'm going to erase this to clear things up. So we're going to get our first destructive uh, interference, our first minimum, in this condition. So let's imagine that we have uh, two parts of the slit. So I'll divide it in exactly half. And this angle theta here, as the waves as the waves are proceeding from the slit. And this will be the angle from the direct transmission, the angle of deviation from the direct transmission. So we can build some um, right triangles, this showing the wave front, or the, the wavelet front of, of the waves as they're coming out, and this showing uh, the <coughs> difference in distance of this side of, this side of the wave uh, the wave from this part of the barrier and the wave from this part of the um, slit. If this distance here is half a wavelength, then when this wave, then this wave will be half a wavelength behind this one. Those wavelets will be half a wavelength behind when they reach. So this wavelet will completely constructively interfere with this wavelength. And likewise, you can go down any corresponding points. Any wavelet from this sector will completely destructively interfere with any wavelength coming from the corresponding part of this sector. So at that angle, there will be complete destructive interference, and you will have a nodal plane in the interference pattern. So what is this angle going to be? Very simply, we have a right triangle. Such as this. We've got this angle is theta. The hypotenuse of the angle is d over 2. And the side opposite to angle theta has a dimension lambda over 2. So the condition for this angle is that the sine of the angle is going to be this opposite side divided by the hypotenuse, or lambda over 2 divided by d over 2. And you see quite simply that the sine, then, is going to be lambda over d. So here's what we come up with. For a rectangular slit, the first node shows up at the angle theta such that sine of theta equals the wavelength divided by the slit width. Things are a little bit more complicated, and I can't derive it simply using uh, the symmetry considerations that we did before if you have a slit that's circular. If you have a slit that's circular, the reason for that is that uh, 
there are more wavelets emanating from the center along a center diameter than you have along a cord that's closer to the edge. So you can't just say, oh, all the wavelets from one edge of the slit interfere with the wavelets one half slit width across. They don't completely cancel out. So numerically or using calculus, the condition is going to instead be that the angle of a node is going to be such that sine theta equals 1.22 times the wavelength divided by the slit width. This is going to matter when we get to optics and telescopes in several months. Most of the energy of the wave is between the first, uh, f first nodes, so that would be uh, the first node on the left and the first node on the right. If you have a narrow aperture, in other words, the slit width is small compared to the wavelength, then you're going to get a wider dispersion down to the limit where if the wavelength is the slit width or larger, the slit is essentially going to act like a point source of the wave, and the waves coming out are going to be a semicircular front, and you won't have any nodes or anything like that.